Right, lads. So, my last shortcut video was about a month ago now, where I went over the most important shortcuts from the booster course pass from waves 1 to 5, of course. The only issue with that is I released it pre-wave 6. I now have a whole 8 tracks worth of new shortcuts to mess around with and to show in a new shortcut video, so I feel pretty obligated to do so. I will be doing this video a little bit differently in the sense that I'll be rating the difficulty and the necessity of said shortcuts via big yellow toad balloons going from 1 to 5. Difficulty meaning how hard the shortcut is to pull off, obviously. And the necessity is how important the shortcut is, you know, whether you need to be taking it every chance you get, or if you can completely avoid it without facing any consequences for it. That is just about all there is to explain. Hopefully you've gotten a grasp of the big yellow toad balloon rating system. And without further ado, let's just get straight into it. Right, so kicking the wave off is Roma Vanti. Just before I do get into the shortcuts, I want to explain that firstly, I'll be covering the shroomless shortcuts, then I'll be going over the ones that require shrooms to do. I will also be demonstrating every single shortcut on Peachette Teddy Buggy Rollers. Fitting since it's a new character and it's also going to be the combo that most of you will be using online So it would make sense for me to show you how to do the shortcuts on said combo And no, I will not be showing how to do the shortcuts on inward because I'm an absolute donkey when it comes to that vehicle class quite frankly Anyways enough time wasting. Let's get straight into the shortcuts Starting off with the shroomless shortcuts on this track Yeah, there's not a single one worth talking about on this track, so on to the shroom cuts, I guess. First up is this little turn skip, which is a lap one exclusive shortcut. You can't do this shortcut any other lap. And yeah, the shortcut isn't too important. Main reason being five seconds later in the race, there is a much bigger turn skip you can take if you hold your shroom for that instead. Now on the topic of said turn skip, here it is. It is a lap one and three shroom cut, which skips an entire u-turn it is by far the biggest shortcut on this track so if you have a shroom this is ideally the shortcut you want to be taking now usually on this track whoever front runs is a little bit decided by whoever gets a shroom in the front to take this shortcut with so i'd say it is by far the most important on this track as well and last but not least is shrooming through the little patch of off-road at the very end of the track and you can do this on lap one and lap three just like the shortcut before now, in terms of necessity, obviously, it's not near as important as skipping that big U-turn beforehand. But with it being the very last turn of the race, there could be situations where you could get a spot or two off of taking the shortcut when no one else has a shroom in front of you. So in terms of necessity, I'd say it gets a few points up there. And that just about does it for Romavanti. It's a pretty lackluster track in terms of shortcuts. So let's get straight on to Daisy Circuit. Right, Daisy Circuit. We won't actually be here for that long because there is only one shortcut on the entire track that requires a shroom. So that is the only shortcut there is to talk about, essentially. So best not waste any more time. Let's just get straight into it. Okay, so the only shortcut you can do on this track is the shroom cut going through the house that we all know and love from Mario Kart Wii, except this time there's a glider ramp. And for some reason, they added a piranha plant cardboard cutout, which is a little bit weird, but whatever floats Nintendo's boat, I guess. Executing this shortcut is pretty simple. You want to start off by releasing a super mini turbo and then shrooming right before you hit the cardboard cutout and then releasing a ultra mini turbo on the glider. Now, the main thing you need to make sure you don't do is shrooming too early because if you shroom too early into the shortcut, then your drift will cancel out, you'll lose your ultra mini turbo and then you'll lose a lot of time on the glider because of that. But yeah, the shortcut's pretty easy to get the hang of. It's also very, very important because it is basically the only amount of catch-up potential there is on this track, being the only shortcut on the track. And you definitely need to make sure you know how to take the shortcuts efficiently, which I hope I helped with that a little bit. Anyways, without further ado, let's get on to DK Mountain. Okay, now we're on to the third track of Wave 6, and finally, we have some shroomless shortcuts to talk about. Took us three tracks to get there, but we made it. And interestingly, this is one of two tracks in Wave 6 without any shroom cuts worth talking about. There is the one at the very start of the track, but it saves so little time, it's just not worth mentioning. But with that said, let's get straight into it. Okay, first up is the really funky shortcut where you can get over the wall and drive on part of the mountain. 
I was shocked when I first found out you could do this, but uh, you can. It saves time, and I'm going to show you how. Now, you want to start off by tricking off the first ramp as early as you possibly can. This is most effectively done by shaking your controller as soon as you get to the ramp. Then you want to aim to do a launch trick slap bang in the middle of the second ramp. And then on the third ramp, trick just to the left of the barrel, and you should be getting on the mountain. And of course, as soon as you land on the mountain, perform a right drift and release a super mini turbo on the ground when you land. Now, actually getting on top of the mountain isn't too hard, but consistently performing this shortcut in the fastest way possible can be quite tricky, so I'd say it gets a few points on difficulty, but necessity, I wouldn't give it that many points because it doesn't save that much time, and oftentimes when you are front-running it, unless you're very, very good at doing this shortcut, a lot of the time you can just get away with going around and taking the standard line, really. Okay, on to the last shortcut on this track, which is the massive turn skip at the end. I'm gonna say this real quick, this is an automatic five big yellow toad balloons on necessity. If you're not taking this shortcut, then you are just a bit of a melon, to be honest. Anyways, what you need to do is, on the turn beforehand, release your super mini turbo and then immediately hop to the left. Start a right drift and drift out very, very wide. And right on the edge of the cliff, start another left drift after releasing your super mini turbo again. And hold that drift until you get an ultra mini turbo going into the bridge at the end. Now, doing the shortcuts in safer ways is very, very easy, but doing it in this method, the fastest method, can be quite tricky to get the hang of, so I think I'd give it a few points on difficulty for that. And that is all there is to talk about with DK Mountain, so let's get on to Piranha Plant Cove. Okay, now we're on to the last track of the Acorn Cup being Piranha Plant Cove, as you can see. And I'm very excited for this one because this has by far the most amount of shortcuts to talk about. So without further ado, let's have a look at them. Okay, first off, this is a lap one only shortcut you can do. You can use the coral and the underwater physics to your advantage and skip an entire turn, basically. And you'll see this is a pretty common theme in this track since there's a lot of water. But yeah, this one could not be more simple. You drift off of the ramp to the right, hold your vehicle upwards towards the right the entire time and aim to land on the big red piece of coral. And if you've done all that correctly, then you should have only barely touched the off-road, which is faster than going around. With how little effort it takes to do this shortcut, it is absolutely essential that you're doing this every time you play this track. Okay, onto a very similar shortcut, which you can also only do on lap one, is another turn skip where you also use the underwater physics to your advantage. This one also could just not be any more simple. You start a right drift off of the ramp and then hold upwards and right on your vehicle the entire time, skip the turn, and you should have made it. Same as last time with how easy this is to do and how much time it does save, you basically need to be doing this every time you play this track, so it is a 1 on difficulty and 5 on necessity. Next up is another shroomless shortcut where you use the underwater physics to your advantage. I mean, you guys know the drill by now. Once again, we are drifting off of the ramp to the right and we are holding our vehicle towards the upright. And we are also, once again, skipping a turn. Same as ever. Same ratings on difficulty and necessity. Moving on. Okay, and now we're going to dabble into some of the shroom cuts on this track. And starting off, we have this absolute madness. I mean, I'll just let it play. Yeah, spoiler warning, this is probably the hardest shortcut in the entire video. And of course, I was considering just leaving this out of the video completely because it is so hard to do and you probably wouldn't want to do this in an online situation. Then again, if you are big into time trialing this track, then this will probably be quite helpful because this does save a lot of time. Not worth the risk online in my opinion, but for time trials you should absolutely be doing this. So without further ado, let me show you how to do it. So from the glider, you want to land around about the right and shroom as soon as you land. Do a launch trick and aim for the little bit of road on the wall you can drift off of. Hold that drift going around the rock. And once you've gone around it, release your Ultra Mini Turbo, and then you should have made it. To me, this probably gets a 4 out of 5 in difficulty, because it's nowhere near impossible, but it's definitely very inconsistent. And if we're speaking strictly in online terms, then this gets a 1 in necessity, 
because quite frankly, you do not need to be doing this online. It is a little bit too much. And there is just one more shortcut worth talking about, and that is the turn skip on lap three. Now, of course, I don't really need to be showing you how to do this one because it is just a simple case of driving straight and tricking. So on difficulty, of course, I get to one. Necessity, I'd give it a three. The shortcut saves a good amount of time, but it won't necessarily kill your race if you don't have a mushroom to take it. Now, there are some more simple off-road cuts that I did end up missing, but if I went over every single one, then I'd probably be here all day. So I think it is about time that I moved on to the Blue Shell Cup and the first track of the Blue Shell Cup being Madrid. Vamos! Okay, starting off the Blue Shell Cup is going to be Madrid, my personal favourite of Wave 6. This is definitely a running track, but there are also a few shortcuts that you should be knowing how to do. So without further ado, let's get straight into them. Right then, firstly, I am going to be grouping up these two shortcuts that you do with a mushroom together, as they are basically the same and there's not much to talk about for either of them. The only talking point would be that the lap one shortcut is a little bit faster than the lap three one. So in terms of importance, the lap one shortcut definitely beats out the lap three shortcut. Okay, and we only have one more shroom cut to talk about, and that is the lap two glider shroom cut. And of course, as the name implies, you need to use your glider to get over the fence. And then as soon as you land on the off-road, start a left drift and shroom. And that's all there is to it, really. Okay, onto the shroomless cuts now, which there are quite a few interesting ones on this track. Now, we're definitely going to be starting off with the most challenging shortcut on this entire track, and that is the lap one NISC. We have already looked at how to do this with a shroom, which is fairly easy, but doing this without one is a hell of a lot harder, trust me. Now, I'm not very good at this shortcut, so I'll do my best to explain it, but you need to drift off of the escalator and charge a super mini turbo then release it, hop into the shortcut, and aim to hop on the little patch of road that is present in the shortcut. And then hopefully if you've done that good enough, you should make it. This shortcut is very high risk and I wouldn't say the reward is worth it, so I would not recommend doing this online. But it's definitely good to know if you're doing a shroomless time trial or something. Okay, last but not least is my personal favourite shortcut on this track, and that is the shroomless cut where you straight up just drive through a bunch of outdoor cafe tables, I think that's what they are. Okay, and on how to do this, you need to slightly position yourself to the right while tricking off the ramp and then drive straight and just squeeze through that little gap in between all the cafe tables, and with that, you should have made it. Now, of course, I love this one because of how creative it is, but also because if you are good and consistent at this one, then you are going to be saving big chunks of time on lap two doing this every time you play this track, and it can really help you out in winning races. Anyways, that is just about all there is to talk about on Madrid, so it is about time that we did move on to Rosalina's Ice World. Rosalina's Ice World. Most of the shortcuts on this track were kept from the original version on the 3DS, and they even added a new one to do at the end of the track, so we will get straight into that now. Firstly, the massive turn skip at the very beginning of the track was left in, only difference being that it has been heavily nerfed in this version. And it is also the only Wave 6 shortcut that requires smart steering to do, interestingly enough. But how you do it is pretty simple. You quite literally need to launch yourself off of the ledge, turn on smart steering, and you can do this with only one shroom, but having a second shroom for when you land is much faster. Now, I will give this a few points on difficulty because this shortcut is very reliant on being able to quickly turn on smart steering, and if you don't have the muscle memory for that, then you can struggle quite a lot. But it doesn't save near as much time as it did on the 3DS, so I wouldn't say it's that important either. And of course, I will give a shout to the shroom cut at the very end that they did add, which is completely new. This was not in the 3DS version, which is pretty cool. It actually saves a decent amount of time if you have a shroom to take it with. And in a close pack situation can definitely get you a few spots. So I'll give it credit for that for sure. And the last shortcut I'm going to be going over is accessing the top path on lap two and three. And you actually do not need a mushroom to do this. So you're going to want to start off by snaking on the straightaway before the ramp. And once you get to the ramp, you're going to want to launch trick in the direction you're drifting. And if you've made sure you're tricking off of the middle of the ramp and you have enough momentum, then most of the time you should be making this. For difficulty, this can be a little bit challenging sometimes, especially with bumps online and stuff. So I would give this a few points for difficulty, but this is absolutely necessary. You at least try and go for this because 
getting top path is so much faster than being forced to go in the underwater route, which is much slower. That is all the shortcuts for this track anyway. It is about time we got onto Heavy Metal BC3. Yeah, Heavy Metal BC3 is definitely a fitting name, listening to that music. Anyways, we're not here to talk about the music, we're here to talk about the shortcuts. There are a fair few to talk about on this track, so without further ado, let's get into it. First of all, there are four shroom cuts on this track, all of which don't really need much explaining, and all of which also have the same difficulty rating and the same necessity rating. But yeah, long story short, these shortcuts are pretty important, basically because they are the only shortcuts on the track, and if you are stuck in the back, they are going to be your main way of catching up in the race. And we only have one more shortcut to talk about on this track, and that is the shroomless shortcut where you drive on the very edge of the track at the very end. And to do it is literally as simple as just driving on the tiny strip of road that is on the left of the off-road at the end. And I'm straight up gonna say doing this shortcut is not even necessary. To be honest, I don't even know if I could class it as a shortcut because I have no idea if it's even faster. But I mean, it definitely exists. This track is very lacking in shortcuts, so I feel like it deserved a mention at the very least. And with that being said, it is time to get onto the big one, We Rainbow Road. Okay, so I know I did say this was the big one, but out of every Wave 6 track, this one probably has the least to offer when it comes to shortcuts. There is just one shroomless shortcut in this track, which if you've played Mario Kart Wii, you probably know what I'm talking about, so let's dive straight into it. So after taking the second half pipe, you're going to want to drive off this ledge, hold up on your vehicle the entire time, and you should be landing on the other side pretty easily most of the time. Now, of course, in this demonstration, I didn't, but you can hop over this gap which is a lot safer if you're playing online as they say always better safe than sorry and that just about does it for the wave 6 shortcuts if you enjoyed it drop a like subscribe do all that bollocks if this video does well enough then i might consider dabbling into some of the base game shortcuts a little bit and that's all from me i will see you in the next one in a bit lads